Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Cooper Villa channel. I'm Scott Cooper, and I'm here with Noah Fisher, Tommy Lazaridis, and Aman Pile. We've got a full house to talk about Aston Villa versus Newcastle United from the weekend. Yes, we're reviewing that huge match. The, the Unai Emery dream continues. We're going for Europe, and we're going to be talking about all of that after this. Okay, so yes, it was Villa Park on a Saturday, uh, early kickoff, 12.30 UK time, and it was a top six clash between Villa and Newcastle. Villa in sixth spot, Newcastle were in fourth, and um, it was a huge test for Unai Emery's boys, and um, we'll get into all of that in a moment, but before we do... Noah, we've had a lot of subscribers lately, a lot of uh, a lot of traffic, a lot of uh, comments, and if people are enjoying what we are putting out, what should they do? Well, I think they should follow us on all the social media platforms we've got going, Scott. First of all, before I say them, I just want to say welcome to the Newcastle supporters, because over the last podcast we did, they all jumped on board and gave us a bit of a little bit of smack when they beat us at St James's Park. So welcome back. Hope you uh, enjoy the show. <laughs> um, and if they want to, they can follow us on Instagram at Coop underscore Davila as well, as well as TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. So get on board and follow us on there. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. And Tommy, um, you wanted to highlight a few uh, new subscribers and a few comments. Absolutely. And if I miss any, I do apologize. I've got the whole, I think, eight or nine. So I've got Elliot Stevens, some good commentary. JBTID from Birmingham, tuning all the way in. Welcome, mate. Bill Clee, we've got Mohammed Adam from Norway. I mean, that must be some serious data that you're racking up on your phone contract. But David King, I don't think it's the North Melbourne football legend who's an eight. <laughs> but it is. Welcome, mate. We've got Roger. We don't know if your surname's Federer or Rabbit, so can you please clarify? Welcome, mate. Percy Clark and Glam. Graham Harahan, but it's H O U R A G H A N. So it's not like Harahan Connor. But you never know. Maybe it's been a name change. And, uh, we also got Jeff Lewis in the comments saying Newcastle was a defining game. Bang on the money, Jeff. And, uh, yeah, welcome Newcastle fans, shit kickers. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly was a defining game. And, Iman, I'll go to you first because it was the perfect performance from Villa. Um, from the first minute to the last minute, I think every every player was a 9 or a 10 out of 10. And it just started straight from the off with Ollie Watkins hitting the post 20, 25 seconds in. Yeah, great start. Um, before I go into the game, yeah, Noah and Tommy's comments reminded me the last time we played Newcastle. I said we had on paper a better team, and then Eddie Howe was just getting the most out of guys like Joel Linton, uh, Daryl or Daryl Murphy, and whoever all these other plebs that they have in their squad. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys would like to have Douglas Louise in your midfield, but dominant yeah. performance from our from our lads uh, straight away from kickoff. Um, yeah, very, very unlucky in the first 30 seconds not to be 1-0 up. Um, you know, it was just – it wasn't like a Watkins scuffing it wide type of finish. I think it was perfect placement. It's going for the bottom corner. Um, and, yeah, just very unlucky. And we started like a house on fire. I think I think we needed to um, being at home. I think if the, the longer we left it without scoring, the harder it would have been to break them down and obviously to let them in and then for us to score as well. Um, but, yeah, like – what can you say about the performance from start to finish? I watched the first half driving home from dinner in my car, almost had a few accidents um, <laughs> trying to swerve in there out of traffic. So yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't do that at home, home kids. That's uh... yeah. Don't do that at home. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. But I think, I think halfway through when I realized this is a really good game, I pulled over at Mac has got a coffee, watched the first half at a McDonald's Sydney road car park where the Seven Eleven is Tom. I'm sure you yeah, know that I know, one. But I and then you spent like factory. Yeah, yep, that's the one. And then sped home to catch the second half. But yeah, dominant performance. Um, no one put a foot wrong. Um, yeah, what else is there to say? Onwards and upwards. Um, you know, I've heard people saying that Champions League is too far, but fuck it, I reckon we'll finish fourth. Like, I reckon we can do it. It's in our hands. People saying about, uh, you know, other teams got games in hand or whatever it is. Points on the board is better than games in hand, and we don't look like it dropping any points off the board. So let's go. Spot on. Well, that's it. And we've definitely got winnable games coming up with uh, Brentford away who are in a bit of a sticky 
sticky patch at the moment. And we've got um, <laughs> Fulham as well at home after that. So it's all it's all right in front of us if we want it. But um, yes, I guess going into half time, Noah, I guess the only thing was it was only 1 0 uh, because Jacob Ramsey hit the bar. We had um, a few other efforts uh, here and there. And we were just all, all over Newcastle and they weren't really looking like scoring at all. I mean, not at all. I mean, to say we're disappointed to be one nil up against Newcastle at halftime is uh is a pretty weird thing to say. But we had some unbelievable chances in that first half. Like the, the one that springs to mind is obviously um, Ramsey hitting the bar. But I know Watkins had the shot that was saved. And yep. I, I went to watch it with the Melbourne Lions on on Saturday night. So I was good we were at the Imperial, not our normal home of the the Dickens Tavern. But yeah, all the vibe there was just up and about, and actually couldn't believe like how high quality football we were playing. Yeah, it was, it's incredible. Uh, Tommy, Emery's got this team absolutely purring. Um, just from 1 to 11, everyone had a great game. Ollie Watkins, like we spoke about, just so dangerous, so confident. He just wants to get that ball, get it on his right foot, and, you know, he gets a shot on target nearly every time now. Um, and, you know, we just look so dangerous. Um, we had the the one change before the game was uh, Dan Donker in for the injured Bailey. And I think that was a great decision. I think that was his best game for Villa. Um, and we pushed McGinn a little bit more forward into that more Bailey role. And um, our midfield and, you know, attacking mids are just so hard to pick up these days because we're just buzzing around everywhere. Yeah, mate. And I think Ollie's up for a contract renewal. I think they're looking to give him 100K. Don't know how long it's for, but I'd probably say I wouldn't be surprised if it's a long-term deal. He can lead the line now. And uh, yeah, um, second of all, I'm surprised Noah didn't bring this up. You know, a bit of a stats man. I saw it floating around. Aston Villa have scored 11 goals this season in the opening 15 minutes of play. 10 of those 11 have come from home games. Wow. That's it's 10 separate home games we've scored in the opening 15 minutes. And go figure that our away form is actually better than our home form half the time. So there you great go. Stat, great stats. You can what take my stat, job. Mate. I've stolen that one. Now, also, speaking of some stats, I'm just going off live score, the most untrustworthy source. Now, you tell me, you know, before the Newcastle spam comes, said, you know, if you, if, that you can pause your Geordie Shaw and tune in. <laughs> it's the only good thing going for Newcastle right now. Now, we had six shots on target. They had two. We had six shots off target. They had three. So all up, we've had 12 shots. They've had five. Now, you look at the stats where they actually uh, they perform better than us. They're actually unfavorable stats, funny enough. So we had two block shots. They had three. Uh, we we were in possession 52%. They were 48 And again, you know, in terms of chances created from almost 50-50 possession, obviously favoring us, right? We had seven corner kicks. They had two. We had one offside. They had four. Mm. We had... 13 fouls to their 15. We had 20 throw-ins. They had 17. One yellow card each. We had 13 crosses. They had 14. You know, the whole extra cross. Well done. We had two counter-attacks. They had one. It was two goalkeeper saves to us and three to three to them. I thought Pope was probably their best player. Uh, we had six goal kicks. They had seven. But obviously, we did dominate. We had four treatments. They had none. So, uh, <laughs> you know. But, uh, yeah, like I said, stats don't lie. Six on, six off to their two and three. I mean, they did have some dangerous shots. I think Emmy pulled out some big saves. Um, Jolinton was probably their, I reckon, probably their most dangerous player at one point. And again, um, yeah, I just thought we played them off the park. One nil at, at halftime was an injustice to us. And, you know, Ramsey just coming in, just a man possessed all of a sudden. I think he's really starting to find his way in the Emery system. Um, I think I'm going to be the first one of many to, to shout out Moreno. That guy's really just slotted right in. I think this might be the end of Digne. We'll ship him off and might even find backup for Moreno. His defense mm. was point. And again, I just didn't really see anyone getting around him all night and then just pinging crosses in left and right, spewing with Ollie's offside goal, right? I'm talking, we're talking like a bee's dick for God's sake. Um, you know, really, really shattered for him. Could have been, could have been three, but. It is good. He was so good though on that opening goal, the Ramsey goal. That that yeah. knockback from Ollie, that just shows, you know, he's not worried about goals at the moment. He's just trying to do the best thing he can, can for the team. He's everywhere. He's contributing, you know, all around the box. He, he's pressuring, he's defense, but he's also, you know, creating a chance. He knew that Ramsey was going to be there and he gets quite high off the ground there. And um, the, the knockback is just perfect. And that's just putting the team first, right? And that's mm. what a forward does. I think he, he could always contribute in other ways apart from goals. And I think now we're probably starting to see that blend. He can be a little bit selfish at times, but know when you know when it's important. And yeah, he could have tried to. You know, it was probably a few times in the game where he's 
had the shot. Now he's got the license to because he's got the red the red hot foot. Um, he's a man possessed. I think his daughter was at the game with his missus partner. I don't know what she is, but you know, lovely to see her there. And uh, you know, daddy was dominating. He certainly is dominating. And um, like you said, um, you know, it could have been 2-0. Uh, Ollie gets the uh, goal that he's just offside, but he didn't have to wait long after that, Aman. The second goal did come, and this time it was Ollie Watkins. And I think this goal in particular was just highlighted, you know, how far he's come. He's so strong. He's got his back to goal. He takes a good touch, and then he just knows where the goal is, and he doesn't have, even have to look. He just swivels hooks it in through the through the defender's leg, and it was an amazing finish. Yeah, the, the, the lead-up play to, like, the first goal, uh, the offside goal, and then, like, this goal was just, um, uh, what do you call it, um, very just amazing. Oh, sorry, I just had a work email pop-up. But, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the lead-up the, the lead play was, like, you know, really, really good. The off-the-ball movement, like, you know, Buendia shifting off the ball, uh, for the first one, then Moreno going in. And it's like, I think the tactics have become so well drilled into the players that they just can hit a pass and know that then that the next run's, you know, going to be made where that player's going to be. Um, yeah, great finish from Watkins. I think, you know, confidence is key, but obviously all the, the extra effort that he's been putting in sort of come off because I feel like he's that type of chance at the start of the season, he won't be there in that position. Um, and, you know, great finish. And I think, uh, I think, uh, I think it was a celebration for the second one. Sorry for jumping ahead, but you could tell, or maybe it was a second goal and not his, not the, like the third goal, but he was just like, it's done. Like it's over. They're not scoring. Like, you know, yeah. that's it type of thing. like that. Um, so yeah, you can tell he's in form. I think a few weeks ago, he said he wanted 20 goals. And, you know, I was going to say that's out of reach, but the way he's going, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets there. Definitely not. And um, and Noah, I think, you know, when you hear him talk about the way that Emery's improved his game, um, it's it's very it's very sort of important just to hear the way he's, he's talking about it and how he's making different runs that he maybe he was six months ago. He's um, staying in between the goals a lot. He's um, He's trying to, you know, be the final piece of the puzzle and be on the end of those uh the, the great movement he's not coming as deep and um I, i'm just yeah i guess under previous managers i don't know if that kind of message was really getting across you know it just seems that every player now has a job has a role knows it knows how it works within the system and it's just pulling it off yeah there was one stage i think it was in the second half or maybe it was the first half that the center back had the ball and walker was like chasing him down and then mm -hmm. once he passed off, he stopped. But previously, yeah. he'd run for the other centre back and keep running. Where you can kind of tell, like he's adjusted to that role, where he's now just he's the main man, he's the centre forward, he just needs to stay in between the goals. And look, Newcastle fans were saying all he scores is tap ins because you know you got to be at the right place at the right time anyway. I mean, some goals that other people score are tap ins as well. But he's just such a just a great finisher in general. I wish that one wasn't offside. Would have loved to have seen him score a hat trick. But going mm -hmm. back, this is going. This is a long time ago. This. There's one person in this podcast that said said striker would be gone. Now That's I don't right. know who, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, someone said he would be gone, but I'll tell you something. There's a lot more stats coming around. I know Tommy just uh, said some before, but mm. he, apparently the percentage of us finishing fourth is only 0.5 of a percent. Well, look, we'd have to be pretty much perfect or almost perfect um to do that um so yeah i can i can see why it would be like that and the fact that we haven't been up in europe for a long time probably comes into those sort of predictors but um you know I, i'm more worried about what we are doing and what we we we're, we're going to do in the in these next few games and i think that i mean we've scored in every game that emery's been in charge i think i saw we've played 18 games under emery we've won 14 um Lot, drawn three or uh of one twelve uh one 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 twelve drawn three lost three. So no, I think we, we lost is that four, right? Lost four, drawn four. Okay. We oh. lost to Liverpool, Leicester, Man City, and Arsenal. That Leicester loss was such a kick in the balls now that you yeah. look at it. Yeah. 
Oh well, this was all competition. So there was the there oh, was yeah. also the loss to Man United and Stevenage as well in there. But anyway, we were we've got a an amazing amount of points. We've scored in every single game, um, and you know, apart from Arsenal and Man City, we have you know as many points as anyone. So going into these final few games, we can use that and use that sort of fear factor and confidence and the sort of momentum we're building to sort of, you know, beat some of these teams in and around us. And we still have to play, you know, Brentford, Brighton, Spurs, you know, the teams that are around us as well. So these are six pointers and we, and we can, you know, if we can keep this run going to the end of the season, why not finish fourth? Why not finish? You know, I think six is definitely on. I'm not, I agree with Noah. I, if, I... If I was Brighton, I'm probably the least one, the last one that's worried about Villa. They got two games in hand. Let's be real; they're probably going to win one and draw one. The form they're in. If I was Spurs and Newcastle, we're one win off matching them, right? And the thing is, we've actually still got to verse Spurs. I mean, mm -hmm. they're just coming off a loss to Bournemouth at home. How embarrassing, right? So no, like we can do it, and we've beat them before. We'll do it again. I, I'm not, I don't, I don't really want to leave it to the last day against Brighton. You know, I wouldn't mind going into that with three points, but oh well, it is what it is. But eh, like, it, look, it is I, looking like that could be a. A Massive Europa game. a Europa playoff match and um I do yeah. know that, I think Man City and Arsenal have still got to play. I think it's Newcastle, um, Brighton each. So that's kind of doing us some favors. You know, the thing is when you're fourth, you're really hoping the three teams above you are versing the ones around your vicinity. So um that that I don't know, that's just like that's just well that's it. We've played Man City twice, we've played Arsenal twice, we've played Manchester United once. once yeah, yeah, we've, we've still won, got to so. play them. We've but they're play... they're but they're in a bit of strife right now as well. So I mean, you know, I, I would I'd fancy us against pretty much anyone at the moment. And um Arsenal off the the the, uh, the West Ham draw, I think that's gonna be they're, pretty they're really bottling in the Arlen, Arlen's firing, man. All the Man City are I do think mm. they could possibly nab it. I tell I you, I tell you one thing though. Sorry for interrupting, Scott. But no, go you know it. when Jacob Ramsey and Walker's got interviewed after the game, right? And they got asked about if that if Europe's been mentioned and that if they're talking about it, they they both smiled at each other. Yeah, and I think that's a lot to do because that's probably the first time any I've seen any media come, like actually bring it up because it brought up post game and it got brought up um, in Emery's press conference as well. Like people are now taking notice of it. Even Alan Shearer and People are actually talking about us in the media now, which I don't think's happened all season. Yeah. No, I think this game, it was live on TV. It was the first game of the weekend. It was against a side that, you know, were informed themselves. You could argue we were the two informed sides going into the weekend in the Premier League. And, um, and yeah, to, to beat them, I think, you know, maybe, you know, uh, pundits have looked at us, you know, beating you know, the likes of Nottingham Forest and that and go, well, you know, that's Forest and not really paid too much attention. But now, you know, they have to take notice because, um, you know, we're playing really well and everyone in the team is is contributing. So um, Emery's job is, well, I mean, if he if he's not at least a nominee for um, coach of the season, um, it think, would be a disgrace, but... I think if Man City win, I'll speak it to my mate Joe, you know, because he's a big, uh, he's a big, he's a big Roy Hodgson, the Messiah. Back shout, shout outs to Joe. Yep. Shout out to Joe Schiavello. I think he's a lawyer of some sort. So whatever you need, to <laughs> we'll charge you an arm and a leg like all the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, uh, I said, he said, he goes, he thinks if Arsenal don't win the league, which is quite, a, is a possibility, he goes, it's got to be Emery. Well, it's definitely a chance, and I think um, you know, Eddie Eddie Howe as well has been very good. Um, you know, and and Arteta, I think even if Arsenal finish second, you could argue that he's he's had an unbelievable I year. Like, but I think, I think 14th to top to Europa, maybe even champ, top four, right? Like I think that's a bigger achievement because he started. Well, it was it was 17th as well. We were we were yeah. out of the bottom three on goals scored when Jared got sacked and. You know, then we had that that disappointing loss four 0 away at Newcastle, and just take yeah. your mind back to how you were feeling during that match, everyone. Because if I said to you then, when when we were losing four 0 we didn't have a manager. Um, you know, the Steven Gerrard, you know, um, experiment had failed miserably, and you know, guys like Watkins, McGinn, Louise, they were all hugely out of form. Tyron Mings as well. The way though we turned it around, like no one, not even the biggest sort of um, 
you know, diehard Villa fan with claret and blue glasses on would have thought we, we'd finish in Europe. So um, brilliant effort. And we're not there yet. We've got to keep going. Hopefully we can keep this level of performance up. Um, how are you guys feeling about um, uh, Brentford next week? Um, it's a tough place to go. We don't have a very good record there. Any predictions, anyone? Yeah, 7-0. 7 0 from Tommy. He's uh he's firing tonight. He's uh throwing out the big guns. Moreno six assists. And I heard I heard from a little birdie if we if we do finish in Europe, you're gonna wear the Ben Techie shorts behind you. Is I that will, true? I'll get a jackhammer and go through my wall from the other side just to <laughs> so, yeah, well, I'll, I'll do a live stream. I don't know if we could put it on YouTube or OnlyFans. We'll figure it out. We'll get we'll get it on some content for sure. <laughs> um so you're saying seven nil? Is that is that is that right? I do remember us playing a Sunderland team once who wore very similar uniform. I think it's going to be we're going to it's going to be a statement game. Okay, so backing up the Newcastle um, fisting. What about you, Aman? How how do you think um, we'll go? Maybe not seven, but uh, eight, uh, let's go. Com- <laughs> <laughs> let's go comfortable uh, two nil win. We'll take- uh, away from home, two nil. Leeds can get two right now. Come on, Noah. Um, I was going to go a one nil with a Watkins goal, which I think could win him Player of the Month. This goal, if he scores, because I think he's got five goals so far yep. this month. I think, and Villa haven't won a Player of the Month since I think Ben Teke in twenty fourteen. I think he was the last right. player to win Player of the Month for us, and we've had some players have some good months. I know Watkins has had a, a couple of nominations. El Ghazi as well. We yep. actually had a couple. Um, and we yep. never got one. So I actually only had one manager of the month since we've been ready for which was Dean Smith in January or December of 2021. Yeah, that was that run where El Ghazi was firing the exactly. middle. Yeah, yeah, imagine, imagine the, the double if they both got it. But I think Watkins and Emery could be doing the Villa double in, in this month if they keep rolling. Well, that would be great to see. Um, uh, yeah, I'll say uh, 2-0 as well. I think we'll... We'll go there. We'll be confident. We'll take the points. Hey, two nil is all right, Tommy. It doesn't need to be seven. You know, feel in the first half, Scott. <laughs> well, that would be great. I'd be happy if you are right. And um, you know, it's been a while since we absolutely stuffed someone, so it'd be it'd be nice. So why not? But um, there's been a lot of talk in sort of social media uh, circles and that about Villa's XG and about how we're we're performing a lot higher than the XG is um is suggesting um and i think it's just rubbish because um you know look at the way we play look at the way we're you know we're we're sort of making chances and we're we're, we're taking them like so i don't understand where this is all coming from it's not like um you know, it's it's not like we've been out of the order. And this is how Unai Emery plays. He's always had kind of efficient counterattacks and this sort of thing. So I don't know if anyone's got any thoughts on, uh, you know, people from other clubs saying that Villa will come back to the mean after a while and that we're just sort of outperforming RXG right now. Well, I'll tell you what, Scott, I'm not sure what you'd rather, more expected goals or more actual goals. I'll tell you what, I'll take more actual goals every day of the week. And we actually had more expected goals in Newcastle this week. Yeah. So I know they're one of the teams that were rocking up about it and all that kind of stuff. And some of the players, I guess, were saying some things. I'm not sure if you guys heard what Callum Wilson and John McGinn said, like pre and post game. So I pre-game, didn't hear it. Callum Wilson said, "Villa on fire!" Like with a question mark. Let let the fire. Let them know the fire brigade are in town. Looks like we'll have to put the fire out. Oh. And John McGinn post match said, "A lot of emer- a lot of emergency services at the minute." the fire brigade must be on strike as well. Oh, dear. <laughs> wow. He's got to stop tweeting from under his mum's basement still. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love um, a, a feisty McG- uh, McGinn, like um, when he had his running run with Sean Deitch about you're just a twat with a shit jacket. <laughs> but, honestly, he, John know. McGinn's back. He, he is back. And I actually, someone that we actually haven't mentioned today was Ashley Young. Because mm. he is just sensational. Like he is just unbelievable. And I can't believe he's thirty-eight. And I think Uno Emery mentioned it in his um other. Yeah. The, he's, the come, pre- he's come a long way since exposing himself on the internet. He has, hasn't he? <laughs> 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 well, he's he's playing so well, and I mean, going into uh, 
you know, the the Emery area. That was probably one position that you thought, you know, maybe we need a right back. You know, um, you know, we got cash, of course, as well. Um, I'm trying to um, you. I think just give it to him for at least another year, and I think just like a player coach opportunity. Yeah, I think that would be clever to keep him around. Commission, even if he wasn't playing, just to keep him around the dressing room. Um, but yeah, why not give him another another year? Um, he's playing well enough, and um, I think Concer and Mings as well been quality, absolute quality the last few weeks. Um, we're not looking like making a mistake. I mean, go back to sort of you know six months ago, these guys are making at least one mistake a, a week that was costing us a goal. Um, and now they're just so com- comfortable on the ball. It seems like they know the style of play. They know this possession style. They, they're they getting better and better at it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like guys like Kamara and, that, I mean, you know, how are we going to fit them all in once, uh, once everyone gets back fit? I mean, we need squad depth, so it'll be good. Like everyone's firing, like you know, you, hey, the you, young boys in the championship you back. The Middlesbrough boys are buzzing right now. They are. That's a aren't that's they? a good point. Yeah, they are. Mm, Ramsey and Aaron and, and Aaron and Archer are probably raring to get a little sniff. Can you imagine though, starting next season in a game next season, we have a Ramsey and J Ramsey in the middle of the park for Aston Villa. That'd be absolute dreamland. And and I think Archer possibly to start out wide. He could be. Like it's actually it's actually crazy. But I remember Scott, did you mention how like we should keep Ashley Young around just for like for the change room? Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys have listened to the Alan Hutton podcast, the Claret and Blue. Yes. And appa- no, like he was he featured on their podcast like the story. He told his story. And apparently when he got let go, Dean Smith said to John McGinn that he regrets letting Alan Hutton go in that first season just to have some experience in the change room. And so wasn't I think, it, didn't Lambert fuck uh, Hutton off? No, no, because, well, Dean, Dean Smith didn't renew his contract. Oh, sorry. You're after right. he got promoted. Yeah. And then apparently... No, but Lambert did put him in the bomb squad, but then he, he came back. That. That was actually, I'm not sure. If, if people haven't actually watched it, go check that out because uh, it was absolutely amazing. But the I link, think... Scott, you know, you got to do this on YouTube, whatever it is. Give the give the, the, the Claret and Blue podcast a shout out. You know, I think they need it more than us. So, <laughs> so yeah. Well, we've been getting quite a bit of love, actually, from some of the other podcasts. Um, I had a few, um, you know, contact me and say they're enjoying, you know, what they're seeing. So that's great to see. And, um, I mean, how can you not be enjoying it at the moment? I mean, you know, uh, Max's Villa on tour. Everyone just seems to be having a great time. We're winning games. We're going up the league like anyone anyone's business and you know it's just long may it continue it's been so great um been really enjoying all your comments and all your uh feedback guys it's been fantastic please like and subscribe if you haven't and um and yeah if, let, if you're gonna hate make sure you subscribe then hate all right <laughs> well the uh the the women last night before we go oh, they no. they had oh. a unfortunate defeat but apparently they played very well they and did. Uh, they did it was the yeah. FA Cup semi final versus Chelsea, and Chelsea have their bloody good side. Sam Kerr, yeah. the Aussie, typically scored the winner. But I remember watching. I think Sarah Mailing hit the hit the post and hit the post, Alicia yeah. Layman missed a good chance. But actually, they went and scored did, straight did, after that. Did Layman play? Yeah, Layman played. Yeah, that's, that's, actually, that's all that matters. No, don't worry about the exactly. Result. But she she actually played very well. That they probably actually deserved to win it. To be honest, yeah, there was a, there was a pretty big crowd there too. There was, and you know, it's just um, tops off another great. A great season from them. Um, no, no shame at all to go out in the semi-finals to Chelsea, and um, they'll be back. And I think they'll be bigger and better. I think we're in the women's game. We're really pushing to be as you know part of that sort of top four. That's really hard to break into. Um, I think we're clearly the best team outside of that top four. And uh, Carla Ward's done an amazing job with the team. Rachel Daly on fire. So it's great to see. Um, but yep. Yeah, but um, that's we are playing some great stuff under Udo Emery as well. Please like and subscribe, comment. Let us know how you think we'll go against Brentford. Let us know where you think we'll finish at the end of the year. Will we make it into uh, Europe and whereabouts in Europe? Will it be the Europa League, the Conference, Champions League? Like Aman thinks so. He thinks he's saying top four. So let us know how how you think we'll finish up, and um, we oh. will. Si- no, no, we're not going to see him yet. Scott, it is a special someone's birthday. Oh, had, yes. <laughs> had you not been the fastest swimmer, you would not be here, Scott. So give your dad a little shout out. Happy birthday, Jeff Cooper. Thank Happy you for everything you've done. done. How many years around the sun, Scott? 
He is 72 on Wednesday, so yeah. Now, as much as I tell him, don't get up to any silly business, I'd actually say, get <laughs> hey. I inside. think that's quite appropriate, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. the joke. For, the, for the fans who don't know, silly business is actually Scott's mother commenting on the uh, chat. Yeah. And uh, he's actually <laughs> original identity. We will not reveal anything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before I turn even uh, a paler sort of shade, uh, I think we should wrap it up there. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for all your comments. And we will see you next week after Brentford up the villa. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>